Right then. Hello, everyone. Um, what we have today is a little piece of automation tool that can really help us um, with applying jobs, especially on LinkedIn. Uh, the jobs that use Easy Apply specifically. Um, I mean, it's a tough situation out there for all of us. And um, especially if you are uh, from a technical background looking for a technical job, um, there are a lot of number of applicants for any job, especially in this pandemic type situation that we are in. And um, this could really help with that job finding process. I know a lot of it is about quality over quantity, but um, I don't know how many of us would actually receive a response from a recruiter if we only spend all day putting out like three applications. That doesn't really seem realistic. So that's why what we have here is, which is what our topic today, an automation tool that can really help us, uh, first of all, understanding, uh, understanding and applying for the jobs that specifically we want to target. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to give a little background about this, that um, the learning experience, there's of course, there's a learning experience where uh, mm, we can customize our resume and a cover letter for each and every company that we would like to send it to. And although that's a great thing to do, um, it really takes in a lot of effort and it might not really be worth it. So this is where you can take a decision how to use this automation tool. I'll be telling you what filters can you put in, what more things can you add? I won't really delve into the absolute specifics of it because it's not required. I'll really try to keep it as simple as possible for anyone to use this. And I promise you it would be an amazing experience for you to even learn something out of it because like that manual process of applying on LinkedIn, I mean, I'm sure we are all tired of it. Okay, so um, without delaying this any further, let me start sharing my screen. All right, so um, yeah, so just to make it very clear, I will be um, sharing my GitHub code with you um, and all the files that are part of it. I'll explain to you what you need to do um, so that you don't really have to get into the specifics. You can, if you want to, feel free to try it out, feel free to test out uh, some more filters, but I'll make sure that um, uh, the GitHub code explains pretty much everything and that you only have to run the exe file with some information and not really uh, break your head around what needs to be done, blah, 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 blah. So, all right, mm, how are we getting started here? Um, I will have the entire code here on GitHub. Where is it? Yeah, I will have the entire code here on GitHub. This is actually also based on um, a colleague's code. I've really updated it to make sure that um, it's much more relevant and faster for you to run the exe file. There were some problems with the old one. And yeah. So where do we get started from? Um, go through the readme section of it. Um, that will really help you understand what you need to install first. So um, there are a couple of files. The first thing that you need to run in the executable file that I'll be sharing with you is uh, the requirements. There are a couple of packages that I need you to install. And uh, that comes from, a, so as you can see, install requirements.txt and that comes from a file here. Uh, where, as I mentioned, there are a couple of packages that we need to install, the most important of one, which would be Selenium. Now, again, I don't want to get into specifics, but just want to give you some background uh, that um, about what Selenium is. So basically, um, Selenium web driver, it's like a um, collection of open source APIs, right? And uh, which is basically used to automate some web processes, uh, some testing of some web applications. Now, the best part about it is it is like independent of any platform. So the same code, uh, so basically you can run this in Mac, Windows, no issue at all. Um, and that's one of the reasons we're using this since we will be um, automating some web processes, which you will see today. And there are a rest of other stuff, blah, blah, blah. So you can, of course, research on it if you want to, but huh. So, oof, all right. So this was the requirements file. That's the first piece of code that you will be running once all the requirements have been, um, once you've run this file in your um, Jupyter notebook, you can use, any, you know, Python executable that you want to. I personally use Jupyter Notebook, works really well for me. And um, then the next part is the actual code that we'll be running. I'll be, I'll try to explain you certain aspects of it, won't really get into much detail. And some really important things that you can edit that you need to know. And of course you can also play around with it as much as you want, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, we have imported all the required packages. What's next? Um, before running the code, one important file that I need you to look at is the config file, which you see on my screen right now. Um, there are certain things that I really want to make sure you understand here because this might be the most important aspect of running this entire web app. 
now um first things first username password very simple your email address your password for your linkedin profile through which you would like to apply for jobs uh, i'll be using like a demonstration profile that i had created for this particular demo that i'm doing all right now the next part is the positions that you would be applying for here are some examples let me just put in so there's data analyst you see here let's just uh, put in a business analyst as well and put three positions you can put more try to really filter out um the positions that you want to target right so there are some optional parameters that are like to talk about as well um one is definitely the resume the cover letter and the photo all of them you can give actually parts to from your system um you might have a resume on file as well that's also cool but if you don't and you want to make the entire application uh, completely automated this might be a good thing to explore so you can see here uh, it's asking for a path to resume so i'll give you an example uh, just remove the hashtag all right and now i need to put in the path to my resume uh, i have a resume on file here so i'm going to just select this path all right paste it here and follow it up with resume this is pretty much it and then one second sorry yeah this this is pretty much it you can do the same things for cover letter as well as photos and uh, it will automatically upload any file that's available in your system um output file name this is another important thing how can you track where um, all the output is coming from like where uh, have the jobs how many jobs have you applied to has this uh, web automation tool applied to and how many of them have been successful the application has been successfully completed so this is by default it's output.csv you can rename it to anything you want to this is this is where you do it by the way but by default in the same file location you will find an output.csv um another two aspects that are very important is the blacklist and the blacklist titles which is as simple as the title describes if there are certain companies that you don't want to apply to you can use the blacklist to remove just type in the name of the company as many number as you want to and it will not apply to those companies which is a very important thing and if there are any titles that you want to very particularly avoid let's say if you're looking for full time jobs so just write down intern here and then it will not apply to any position that has the keyword of intern so this was an overview all right i know it might be a little too much but um, yeah this should be enough right we can delve into the next part of this particular video right so now we have this what do we do now i'm going to run this and i'm going to show you how simple it is okay i have already installed um, all the packages that i need to as you can see here i'm going to run this cell and soon really soon uh, you should be able to see um, it running it will open in my chrome browser as you can see here uh, is going to put in my email and my password as you have observed and as i mentioned it's a uh, mm -hmm. right so any steps that it doesn't recognize it will skip and now you can see that it's already on the job page now this will take some time here there are a couple of reasons for it and there are a couple of things i just wanted to make sure you understand while you are able to observe what's going on on my screen so give me a second to to uh huh right so a couple of things that i just wanted to make sure you understand here uh, one thing is that um you can use this to apply for jobs but do not misuse it this is just kind of like a learning experience um that i wanted to share with you guys and i wanted to tell you how to do it but um, you can get perma banned for misusing any sort of automation tool to apply for jobs right so long story short um, just don't misuse it you would be fine um now as you can see it's going through the list ideally it will show uh, 25 results on a page and out of those 25 it's um, looking at different job ids uh, first of all seeing that which of these jobs meet the criteria of easy apply and once they do that uh, as you can see it's uh, you can see the filters have already been put in for data analyst and remote which were um, some of the things that are put in my configuration file data analyst and remote so working as expected um now let's see if it actually works when you try to apply to a job right so let's let's see for example this particular job uh you see it's been posted it's an easy apply job based on the filters that we have put in now the next step what it's going to do is it's going to click on it and uh, all the details that it's asking for it will try to fill in from the information we have put in into the system um there's the normal the resume and boom done now moving on to the next one i uh, mean while it does this let me just tell you that um, if there are any fields that hasn't been 
uh, which is required by the job profile and you haven't entered it into the system uh, manually or otherwise, then it will just move on to the next one. Uh, let's see if we get an example for that. Apex system data analyst, all right. I have uh, these fields available. So it has pulled in that information. Next would be resume. That's also been pulled in. That's also available. Now it, it requires me to enter how many experience to have in SAS. I have entered that. Boom. Submit. If I didn't have that information on me, if I didn't. Uh, so at this point, I manually filled it. You can do it automatically in the code itself, uh, which is what I've done for some of the questions that I know they ask. But overall, this method should really work well for you. Um, it will sleep every 20 applications for some amount of time so that um, LinkedIn's algorithm does not detect it and permanently ban you. Um, apart from that, it will keep applying for 10 hours, right? And um, once you have done it, like basically after 10 hours, it will just shut down the, the process, but uh, you can obviously change that. You can make it five, you can make it 20 hours, however you want to. Just make sure you're not misusing this because I'm repeating this again, you will be permanent if you get caught. I'm just really trying to help you understand some of the processes. Uh, you could obviously modify this to make it a little bit better, but I've used it to fill in most of the fields as you can see. And uh, yeah, um, it takes in the information from what you put in. And if everything is according to plan, then it will move on to the next step and the next step. And uh, if there is a field that's missing, that's required. So it will say, um, you know, please enter a valid answer. And if you don't, no problem. It will just move on to the next job to apply to. So that was just an overall view that I wanted to give you guys. And um, while it keeps doing this in the background, let me just show you uh, some of the parameters that you can change play around with. So I have basically also put into my requirements some of the questions uh, to get answered. Like for example, how many years of experience do you have in Python? And the answer to that, uh, so that uh, the system can pull it. Uh, obviously we will uh, sometimes encounter questions um, basically that we don't know. Like for example, how many is your experience in Google Ads, Facebook Ads, Google Analytics, all of this you can add into the web automation tool so that it can automatically detect it. The more questions you know they ask or the more questions you know that's relevant to you that they ask, you can put it into the tool and that should really help you. Right, so apart from this, what I really wanted to tell you probably lastly, is that, um, let's go to the max search time that we have. Right, so this is where you can enter the max search time. Like I've said, it's by default is 10 hours. Let's play play around with it, change it if you want to. And um, by default, it will also go to sleep in every 20 applications. Uh, sorry, yeah, every 20 applications. But of course, you can change it however you want to. Um, a lot of other things that you can play around with, but that's not important to know. What's important for you to know is I'll give you this code. You just have to run it in like a Jupyter notebook and you're good to go. Um, don't misuse this. I'm just saying this again and again. Don't misuse it. It's a really good thing. Um, it really helps you save time uh, to all those companies that you that are in your to-do list, but not the absolute top priorities. Um, put in a cover letter, put in a resume. Um, like a standard cover letter should help. So you don't have to tailor it to every single company. And overall, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's a great experience as you can see. Um, any information, any help you need, let me know, reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'll try to help you with it. How to enter those fields uh, is something I've not covered particularly in this video, but yeah, reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, yeah, everything else looks great. Enjoy, have a great day. And uh, yeah, I'll be putting in the GitHub link. I'll be putting in the link um, to the repository, I'll be putting the link to, to what else? Well, that's pretty much it. Yeah, uh, and connect with me on LinkedIn. So yeah, mm, thanks everyone. Have a great day.